Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1982 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is between the Boston Red Sox and the Detroit Tigers at Tigers Stadium. On the mound for the Red Sox is Bruce Hurst, whose record is 5-7 with a 5.24 ERA. And pitching for the Tigers today is Tom Filer, whose record is 3-0 with a 2.60 ERA. Okay, we had a really amazing victory yesterday. We were down six to nothing. We had our own six run inning and then walked it off in the uh, bottom of the 10th inning with a two run home run by the Brock Ness monster, Greg Brock. So a nice walk off victory for the Tigers yesterday. We have the third and final game today. We will also have the final uh, Elite Eight robot race to get into the final four. That's going to happen. Uh, that's going to take place during the uh, seventh inning stretch. And then we're going to go on the road for three days and face the Yankees. And then when we come home to face the White Sox, the first team we're going to uh, see in the American League West, we're going to have uh, the first two games will have the final four set up. Uh, for the robot race then we'll take a day off and then the final for the championship uh, to win the raleigh fingers autograph uh, photo um, with a certificate of authenticity that's going to take place on uh, the date of june 23rd uh, within the game so that's a, how that's going to work out and then it'll just be back to normal baseball after that maybe we can think of something fun down the the stretch to do uh to uh make the uh, the stretch to the playoffs a little more interesting we'll see what we can come up with so here we go tom filer on the mound for the tigers today not a lot to go on he's only had 10 plate appearances against the red Sox. uh as brian kelly will not be available today he pitched two innings in relief yesterday and uh the rest of the bullpen is available and then looking at the lineup again another lefty Switched it up a bit today. We're going to go ahead and give uh, Ricky the day off. We're giving Trammell the day off. Uh, both were listed as tired, so that's fine. We're going to let them rest today. We have Wags in at short. Andre Dawson is back in there playing center field today. And uh, Reggie's going to be batting third and DHing. So those are some of the minor changes we've done today. Let's go ahead and look at the boston red sox lineup rundown a little different than the last couple of games batting leadoff playing right field is yvonne calderon batting second at second base is marty barrett batting third at third base is wade boggs batting cleanup and making his major league debut today is catcher dave schmidt batting fifth in left field is jim rice Batting sixth at first base is Dave Stapleton. Batting seventh in center field is Freddie Lynn. Batting eighth in DHing is Clint Hurdle. And batting ninth at shortstop is Roy Smalley. We'll take a look at Tom Filer. He's made uh, three starts this year, fourth start today. And he's 3-0. He's won all three of them. Uh, two of them were pretty decent performances. The third one, we'll take a look at his log here. Uh, the second one of the three uh, was the rough one where he gave up four runs in five and a third innings and uh, still managed to get the win. And uh, his other two performances were stellar. Didn't give up a run in his uh, debut for the season. And he did not give up, a uh, give up one run, I'm sorry, against Cleveland on July 11th. So we'll see how Tom Filer can do today against the Boston Red Sox. An unusual lineup. Calderon batted cleanup yesterday, and now he's in a right field. Take a look at the Detroit Tigers defensive alignment. Left side of the infield, a little shaky with uh, Hatcher and uh, Wags. Otherwise, we look pretty solid, and here is Yvonne Calderon leading off against Tom Filer. Slow roller to Hatcher. Hatcher throws him out. It's good to give Hatcher an easy one early. He, uh, <laughs> he struggles at third. 
That's for sure as uh, Marty Barrett lines out to left. Two down. It's going to bring up Wade Boggs. Boggs batting 320 on the season. Grounds out to the Brock Ness Monster. And that'll do it. We go to the bottom of the first. Here is the Tigers lineup rundown. Batting leadoff, playing second base, is Sweet Lou Whitaker. Batting second, playing third base, is Mickey Hatcher. Batting third in DHing is Reggie Jackson. Batting cleanup and catching is Lance Parrish. Batting fifth at first base is Greg Brock. Batting sixth in center field is Andre Dawson. Batting seventh in left field is Kirk Gibson. Batting eighth in right field is Kevin Bass. And batting ninth, playing shortstop today is Mark Wagner. The lefty, Bruce Hurst, all three lefties, uh, starting pitchers in this series. <coughs> Excuse me, I apologize. As always, I have my uh, allergies acting up again today. Um, so Bruce Hurst, yeah, he's making his 16th start, 5-7 and seven with that 5-24 ERA. 84 Ks and 99 innings pitch. Pretty impressive there. Opponents are batting 289 against him. He has three complete games and two shutouts. Uh, which is no surprise because <laughs> they really let their starting pitchers go deep. Yeah, he had, uh, in his last start, he threw 135 pitches. He has yet to face Detroit this season. So, first time facing Bruce Hurst. He is technically their staff ace. Uh, he's in the number one spot. So, uh, take a look at the defensive alignment for the Red Sox today. Other than Freddie Lynn in center field, there are no other gold glove winners. And Sweet Lou leads off against Bruce Hurst. And Whitaker, his uh, four-game streak of five home runs, that's well in the past now. He has the most home runs of any Tiger in the lineup today, but he's as quick as that power came, as, as quick as it left. So Hatcher gets a base hit in the center field keeping his average over 320 now up to 323 we're gonna let Reggie Reggie swing away here two for three in his career against Bruce Hurst and uh, he did well in yesterday's game against the left-hander striking out swinging against Hurst though so two down for big wheel Lance Parrish Parrish batting 325 against left-handers he does have a home run against Bruce Hurst and he flies out to center field to end the first. We go to the top of the second. Here's Dave Schmidt. Uh, why does Dave Schmidt not have a card? I'll have to uh, create one for him. But uh, yeah, he's making his major league debut, age 25. Jumping up from double A. He was in triple A last year. They sent him back down for a little more seasoning and then he just jumped right to the majors. He's going to lead off against Tom Filer, and he strikes out. First K for Filer. Hall of Famer Jim Rice up next. He rips it down the left field line, all the way to the wall, and he has himself a double. That is Rice's 12th double of the season. A little bit of a power drought for uh, Jim Rice. Only six home runs on the season, and his OPS was just above 700. Runner in scoring position for Dave Stapleton who grounds it to Brock. There's two down. That's going to leave it up to Fred Lynn to get that runner in from third. And he crushes at the center field, but I believe Dawson will track it down. He does. We go to the bottom of the second. Last night's hero, Greg Brock leading off. He had his eighth home run. It was a walk-off. It was majestic to center field. As Brock pops it up to short. Played made by Smalley. Andre Dawson up next. Dawson. Total garbage. <laughs> I know. He's, he's so bad. And uh, maybe I should have made that trade. I don't know. As Gibby grounds out to third. Oh, man. We are really struggling with Dawson in the lineup. We go to the top of the third. There's no score. Tom Filer looking pretty good so far. 
facing Clint Hurdle. Popping it up on the infield between Brock and Whitaker. Who's going to catch it? It's Brock. One down. Here's Roy Smalley. Batting 307. Kind of an unsung hero on the Red Sox. Popping out to Sweet Lou. Back to the top of the lineup with Yvonne Calderon, who rips it up the middle under the glove of Whitaker. Calderon is on first. He's got a lot of speed. That's probably why he's in the uh, leadoff role today. And Barron takes straight three looking. I thought that, it, well, it appeared to be that was a stolen base attempt. That's why I waited for a moment, but strike three on Barrett. We go to the bottom of the third. We've got Bass, we've got Wags, we've got Sweet Lou do up. Bass rounding out to second to lead off the inning. There's one down. Wagner's average is just over 400. Now that we're using him more often, his average is kind of falling more in line with what a backup utility infielder uh, should carry for a batting average. He's under 400 now. And Lou will line out to center field. You still can't complain about a 396 batting average from a backup catcher. I mean, backup uh, shortstop. Okay, so we go to the top of the fourth. No score. Wade Boggs leading off Boggs. Schmidt Rice. Wade grounds it to Wagner at short, and he boots it. Boggs safe at first, and I believe that is Wagner's first error of the season. We'll set up a tasty double play opportunity with the catcher. There we go. There's an easy one for Wags to handle. Oh, he can only get the runner at second. Schmidt's got an 80 speed for a catcher. Well, how, do you have any stolen bases in the minor leagues? Let's take a look. Oh, yeah, he had double digits twice in double A. Okay. So, runner on first. Only one down. Jim Rice steps in. One, two count. And he hits a fly ball to center. There's two outs. Dave Stapleton walks. Stapleton was an all-star last year. And uh, good enough to keep uh, JT in, in the AAA. First and second now for Fred Lynn with two down. And he flies out to left. Gibby makes the play. And there's no score. This game's moving along at a decent clip today. We've got Mickey Hatcher leading off with a ground ball to second. This might be a game where we got to get somebody on. Steal a base. A little sack bunt. Play some small ball. Oh, gosh. Reggie. Two Ks today. I put him in the third spot in front of Parrish. Maybe thinking he'd see some better pitches. but he, Maybe he has. He hasn't hit him, that's for sure. As Parrish grounds out to first. So, we go to the top of the fifth. No score. Both pitchers are in total control. As Clinton Hurdle steps in. And Hurdle... Hits a deep drive that is gone over the fence in right center field, and it's 1-0 Boston. Eighth home run for Hurdle. We didn't have any home runs last year. A, a kind of a weird anomaly. Filer comes back and strikes out Smalley, one down. Back to the top of the lineup for Yvonne Calderon, who gets another base hit. He's two for three today. So Calderon on first, I think this is definitely an opportunity to steal. We're also going to pull third base in in case Barrett lays down a bunt. Yep, slow roller to second. Can we turn two? Nope. They get the lead runner, Calderon. Filer at 59 pitches. Wade Boggs up next. And he slaps it past Hatcher at third for a base hit. That's going to bring up Dave Schmidt. Schmidt's 0 for 2. Still looking for his ma first major league hit. And he strikes out on the inside pitch from Filer. 
Strikeout number four. So the home run uh, by Hurdle gives the Red Sox the lead one to nothing. We've got Greg Brock leading off the inning. He walks. There we go. We need this. So we're going to hit and run. That's what we do with Dawson. At least get the base runner over. And he pops it up. He couldn't even do that. Oh, my God. He is horrible. And then Gibby flies out to right center field. This doesn't feel like it's going to be our game. We have two of our best players on the bench today. Another walk from Hurst. His second this inning. Second of the game. This time to Bass. So Brock on second. Bass on first. And Mark Wagner up to the plate. He has been struggling. A uh, slow roller to bear it at second, and that'll do it. We're going to the sixth inning. I mean, Tigers have one hit. Player of the game so far. I mean, Hatcher's got the only hit, so maybe it's Filer. We're going to keep him in there. He's going to face Jim Rice. Rice flips it into left field for a hit. Six hits now, and an error by Gibson, moving Rice to second. Gibby... A poor, poor defensive player. He's got a good rating, but uh, I'm never surprised when he makes an error. He was not so good in, the, in real life. As Stapleton hits it to short, that's the one base we don't want to hit it to. Short stuff, not a base, I realize that, but, you know, to the left side of the infield. Um, okay, we got two lefties back to back here. And uh, I guess we're just going to go right at him. No point in walking him. Oh, come on. Jim Rice steals third on Lance Parrish. That is his second stolen base of the season. And, yeah, he had his first of the season against Detroit in the first game of the series. I, I don't know what to say about that. But we have to pull the infield in now. And he's going to score. I mean, there's no reason for Rice to steal third base up a run in the sixth inning other than for the next batter to automatically get a sacrifice, you know? So, like, that's, that's the kind of thing that really frustrates me with this game is that occurrences occur because they have to in order for the runs to be scored. It doesn't feel random at all. And another error by Gibson. So, I mean, now we've had two errors. A stolen base of third by a guy with a sub-average speed. Um, and there's really nothing we can do about it other than just play it out. So the Tigers have three errors. We have more errors than hits now. Two by Gibson in left field. One from Wags. And we go to the bottom of the six. We do have the robot race coming up next inning. It's a big one as Whitaker gets a base hit down the right field line. Eh, may as well. Whitaker gets himself a triple. I haven't seen too many triples lately from Tiger players. That is his first of the season. Six doubles, one triple, 11 home runs. Probably should be inverted, but we'll, we'll take it. Okay, here's Mickey Hatcher, runner on third. Is that going to fall in for a hit? It does, and Tigers are on the board. No, we're not going to go for two on Fred Lynn. So it's two to one. Boston with Reggie up. Oh, my gosh. I mean, let me swing away. Who knows? That's what we know. Two Ks and a double play for Reggie today. He has absolutely killed this rally. And then Parrish, who hits lefties pretty good, is struggling today. He goes 0-3. We go to the seventh. It's 2-1. to one. At least we got on the board. Hatcher with the RBI. Now he's the player of the game. But now he's 2-3. for three. Okay, we're going to... we got two righties due up. We're going to let Filer go another one. This is a uncharted territory for Tom Filer. First time into the seventh. Ground ball to third. His defense has done him uh, a disservice today. 
as Barrett pops it up to second. And Wade Boggs, we're, we're, we're one Boggs away from the robot race, which is a term of measurement that I, I use sometimes, a, a, a Boggs. Hey, so he's safe on the infield single to third. And that's going to leave it up to Dave Schmidt. And he walks. Okay, so um, we got two righties. So that, that's going to be it for Filer. He's at 94 uh, pitches. He's kind of lost it a bit. We're going to bring in Tom Hume. You've seen this guy a ton. This is his 33rd game. 1-0 with that 338 ERA. Opponent's playing 252 against him. Pretty solid. He's got a save. He's got a bluey. And uh, overall, surprisingly, a good season from him. Okay, here's a uh, Hall of Famer Jim Rice, speedster. More stolen bases recently than Ricky Henderson as Rice hits a grounder to Brock at first, and that's the third out. So we go to the bottom of the seventh, 2 to 1 Boston, and it is time for the Robot Race. Let's take a look at the bracket first. As you can see, John M., Douglas B., and Tony A. have all moved into the final four. The last matchup today is Jeremiah M. versus Allen B. And the winner will move on to be in that final four bracket. Okay, so let's go to the race. Hit super fun full screen uh, mode. Allen B., he looks like a remote control on wheels. And Jeremiah M., uh, is a green robot. 45 seconds on the clock. We'll count down from three, and we'll get ourselves a winner. Loser becomes spare parts. Three, two, one. Meow. Okay, Jeremiah is a step behind. This robot seems very happy. This one's very emotionally uh, unstable, is what it looks like with those two eyes stacked on top of each other. Jeremiah's keeping an even keel. He uh, he wants to win, but maybe he's also a little depressed. He wants to become spare parts. It's hard to say as uh, Alan B at 15 seconds takes the lead. Jeremiah dropping back drastically. Will he make a final run at it? 10 seconds to go. Here it comes. Will Alan kick it into extra gear? Or is Jeremiah going to waltz to the victory? 3, 2, 1. And Jeremiah goes... Rides, uh, just uh, takes the, the victory. Congratulations to Jeremiah. Alan, you've become spare parts. We're going to go ahead and click out of this, and we're going to add Jeremiah to the final four bracket. Very cool. Congrats to uh, Jeremiah, and uh, we're going to add you right now as it's thinking about it a moment. Jeremiah M. Oops. There we go. Congrats to Jeremiah. Let's get back to the ball game and see if the Tigers could pull out another victory. It's going to take a miracle here, though. Bruce Hurst is in control. He's thrown six innings pitched, uh, a couple of Ks, only three hits given up. The one run driven in by Hatcher. Greg Brock starting it off with an infield singles. So he's got a single to go with a walk today. And Andre Dawson. Do we just let him swing away? I mean, I mean, we should hit and run. But I want to like, take a cut. And it's a double play. Unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, how can I possibly play him? And Gibby grounds out. Hurst is in total control right now. We're going to let Hume pitch to Stapleton. Then we'll bring in a lefty. A ground ball to second. There we go. So two uh, two thirds of an inning for Hume. And uh, we're going to bring in Keith Comstock. Not the best pitcher in the world, to be honest. But uh, he's been having an okay season. 25 games pitched, 25 innings thrown. He walks a lot. Oh, that, that's the tough part. And opponents are batting 258 against him. So we need to get a couple lefties out here, starting with Fred Lynn. And a basic left. Leadoff man is on. Playing hurdle up. 0 for 3, 2 Ks against Comstock. 
And then Fred Lynn, again, again another sub-80 uh, uh, rating for speed, steals second base. So, I mean, if I tried to run with Lance Parrish, uh, he, would, he wouldn't be able to steal. He wouldn't be successful. Runner on third for Roy Smalley. And Smalley flies out to center. Dawson makes the play. Dawson is good defensively. We have to give him that much. Okay, so we've got Bass, Wags, and Whitaker due up. Here's Kevin Bass leading off. A uh, blooper into right center field. Is that going to fall in? It does fall in for a hit. Base hit for Bass. No, like, I, I mean, he should be able to make it to second base. Uh, but you know that won't happen for us. So we're going to say no. We've got Wags. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. We're going to sack bunt. That's what Wags does. He's good at it. He's got a bunch of them, actually, right? He's got five sacrifices in uh, 49 at-bats. So he's been good at it. We'll see if we can't sack him on over. He drops his sack down, and Bass is safe at second. Nicely done for Wags. Even when he's having a bad game, he's had an error. He's over 2, but he still contributes. And now Sweet Lou is up, and Lou goes to left. Lined out to Rice. Nope. We're not tagging up. We've got Hatcher up. Hatcher's the man to get it done. He's 2 for 3 today with an RBI. Bass has decent speed, and they're going to intentionally walk him. How many intentional walks does he have now? Intentional walks. Um, three on the season. Interesting. Yeah, because he's only got six. He does not walk much. Uh, yeah, three regular walks in um, nearly 300 at, uh, plate appearances. So now it's Reggie. We cannot in good conscience let Reggie bat. He's been completely overmatched. Uh, we have Trammell, we have Ricky, but they're both getting rest today. So that leaves us with Ramos, Miller, or Solars. And I'm going to go with Bobby Ramos to pinch hit here. Um, we know he can hit lefties well. He hasn't this year, but he does have a history of hitting lefties well. And we're going to give him a shot. First and second, two down. Here's Bobby Ramos against Hurst. And he slams it right into the dirt. And that is the third out. We're going to the ninth inning. Not looking good for Detroit today. We are only down a run, but we have not shown anything. We are going to bring in Roger Weaver. Weaver, our right-handed closer. Give him a couple uh, in, uh, outs here, perhaps, as Calderon. Grounds the first, one down. Marty Barrett, 0 for 4 on the day, drops a base hit in the right field. So Barrett on first for Wade Boggs. Lefty, of course. A ground ball to first. Cannot turn two. Must have been a hit and run as Barrett safe at second. And Dave Schmidt, who's 0 for 3 with a walk in his debut, his major league debut, walks again. Okay, so this guy has a good eye at least. First and second, Jim Rice is up. 20 pitches this inning for Weaver. And uh, it's a high curveball that Rice was just under, popping it up to short. And we go to the bottom of the ninth. Tigers are down by one. Only five hits on the day. We have Parrish, Brock, and Dawson do up. They're one for eight with a walk combined. There we go. Lance Parrish rips it down the left field line. Oh, no. And we can't pitch run for Parrish because I just batted Ramos. Uh, so we don't have another catcher on the roster. Oh, man, I'm dumb. Okay, well, we do have the Brock Ness Monster. And the Brock Ness Monster was clutch yesterday. Maybe he'll be clutch today. Oh, nope. Wrong bag. As uh, Parrish has to hold. 
And now we have Dawson. Oh, he goes to right field. Parrish will tag and take third. Almost a third out at third. 90% chance. Now we have Gibby up. It's lefty on lefty. Bruce Hurst not even tired yet with 118 pitches. We're down to the final out. It's going to take a base hit by Gibby. And he showed absolutely nothing today. Two errors in the field and over three at the plate. But it's Kirk Gibson. We're going to let him swing away. And a base hit into right field. Parrish scores. And that's going to do it for Hurst. The game is tied. All at two. And they're going to bring in Eck. Eck is their closer. It's too late for that. They should have brought him in. Uh, but that, that's something that I would do. I would try really hard to get a pitcher a complete game. And then uh, have it get away from me. Gibby's going to try to steal second. We're going for the victory right now. Curveball. And Gibby is safe with his eighth stolen base on the season. Eighth to twelve. And he's in scoring position now for Kevin Bass, who has an 0-1 count. Chance here to win the ball game. And they intentionally walk him to get the Wagner, which is a smart move. <sighs> I mean, we I mean the whole reason that Trammell and Henderson are out in the game is because they're tired. So we bring them in. They're not their usual selves. So we have Eddie Miller, or we have Gee Salars. And I think we're just going to let Wagner swing away. He's 0 for 2 with a sack today. Oh, he didn't take the bat off his shoulder. We go to the 10th inning. We got some free baseball. We have no more right handers left in the bullpen, as Brian Kelly is listed as tired. So we've got two lefties. We're going to. Hope that Weaver can get Stapleton. And then we'll bring in Rucker. Ground ball by Stapleton to short. There's one down. Good job by Weaver. One in the third innings. No runs. And we're going to bring in Rucker. Rucker is our left-handed closer. And uh, now Fred Lynn does have a... I, I remember this. This was from this season... It was a walk-off home run against Rucker. And Rucker gets him to ground to Wagner at short. There we go. Two down. And then Clint Hurdle hits a high fly ball into right center field. Bass makes the play. Okay, so another chance to walk it off. We've got Lou. We've got Hatcher. We've got Ramos. Oh, boy. All right. So, Sweet Lou's going to lead it off. He is one for four on the day, popping it up to short. One down. Next up is Mickey Hatcher. Hatcher's got a pair of hits, probably the player of the game so far. And he pops it up in the foul ground on the third base side. And it's going to leave it up to Bobby Ramos. I, I screwed us with Bobby Ramos today. And he strikes out. Of course. Okay, we're going to the 11th. Roy Smalley leading off. And we got a couple righties. So this is going to be three right handers in a row. Smalley does not hit lefties well as a switch hitter. Won't matter if he gets walked. This feels like impending doom. Smalley on first. Rucker or lefty. I can't imagine he'd be attempting to steal. Doesn't have to with the base hit by Calderon. He's three for six on the day, and a go-ahead run is at third with no outs. So pull the infield in. And he shoots into the gap. That'll be the ball game. Boston takes the lead. We have no right-handers to go to, so... Uh, I mean, I guess it is a lefty with Boggs, but... Um, that was that was our, uh, our one of the many errors that have been made today. Two by Gibby, one by Wags. Me bringing in the catcher to uh, pinch hit uh, for Reggie. And we did manage to tie it up, I guess. So all in all, not the worst decision I've ever made. But 
uh, and then not having an extra right hander in the bullpen. So he gives up two runs. Rucker does. And that's going to ruin his stellar ERA. We go to the bottom 11. We need two to tie, three to win. And they're going to bring in Rick Grapenthin. Grapenthin. I would imagine that's how you pronounce that. You've seen him before. He sucks. 0 and 5 with a 664 ERA. Parrish Brock Dawson. The duo. Parrish. It's a pretty deep in center field. 371 feet. Not good enough. One down. Brock. Slow roller to second. Two down. This is it. We're down to Dawson. And he strikes out. Looking. Dawson. The worst trade I've ever made. Easily. Tigers lose 4-2. to two. No trade offers coming. Let's take a look at the standings. We're 10 and 4 this month. We can't complain too much about that. And we're 7 and 3 in our last 10. Baltimore gets a game back. They're to four uh, games back uh, behind Detroit. New York holds at five. And uh, Seattle and Chicago both uh, gaining a game. Playing the Yankees next. That's going to be a, a tough series. We're going to face some really great pitchers, including the pitcher they just traded for, uh, Scott Sanderson. We're going to see him in that series. Looking at the transactions, Omar Marino got his 300th career steal. Look at that. He's 35 out of 38 this season, batting 275. You have to think he's going to be an all-star. Let's pull up the box score and get out of here. Thanks for watching, everybody. Like and or subscribe. I hope you got a chance to watch the uh, football card video that I did. Uh, we're going to post it in the video section over here one more time. Uh, there it is. Player of the game is Mickey Hatcher, who now leads the Tigers with 11 votes for player of the game. He drove in one of the two runs. Gibby did uh, have the uh, base hit to tie it up, um, but it wasn't a go-ahead. So Rucker takes the loss. He goes to four and three rel relief. Is oh, ERA still under two? Eckersley gets the win. He's 6-1, and one, and Grapenthin gets his first save of the season. Hurdle had that home run, which was a big deal. And uh, Parrish got his 10th double. So that's going to do it for today. We're going to come back tomorrow at Yankee Stadium. Until then, everyone, have a great day.